Hey everyone, and welcome to 3 for 30, a surfcraft review where I will be reviewing three boards for 30 days. Ideally, we all want the perfect three board quiver that will work for any conditions our coastline provides. So in each episode, I'll be reviewing just that, a small board, mid board, and a long or big board. At the end, each board will be numerically rated using six different categories, which will give an overall score. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. What's up guys? Welcome to episode eight of three for 30. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking it out. Uh, so to start this off, I uh, was asked to kind of get some footage with this board. I had a few people reach out saying that they wanted to see something, wanted to get a little bit of feedback. So this is the fine line uh, GB. Uh, this was supposed to be shown in the last episode, but was not. But I am going to get a couple waves on it and kind of tell you guys my thoughts on it. I will be using the same exact fin setup, which this is the Hydrophile Night Goat. And with these two little side fins as well, kind of put into these little FCS plugs. Uh, it is obviously the same dimensions as the last review. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Uh, and on for the mid, all right? All right, guys, and now for the mid. Uh, we are venturing back into Rob Machado territory. This is a 6.8 Sunday by Firewire. This is Helium Construction. This is their newest construction that they've been working with. Uh, it feels really good. It feels really light. Very interested to see how it kind of feels in the water though. Uh, so just a little background on this board. This is kind of like an evolution of what Rob Machado is into. Obviously he started off with the Go Fish, then going to the Seaside, Seaside and Beyond and then doing the Glazer, which I reviewed earlier, and then now the Sunday. Um, and what it is is a, uh, a board that goes anywhere from uh, small volume all the way to higher volume. This particular one, 6.8 by 21 by three inches thick. Pretty big board for uh, 6.8, um, but although you know it doesn't really look that big, this has 48 liters of volume. Um, as you can see, I put my little thingamajiggies right here. So this is where the nose rocker starts. This is where the tail rocker starts. This is the wide point. It's right around three inches above center. Uh, nose width is 15.5. Tail width is 15.5. Uh, nose rocker, 4.75. Tail Rocker 2. Um, and again, this is kind of one of those interesting boards just because it is now a mid length, but it is a little bit more pulled in, almost eggish. Uh, what we do have is we have a single concave coming in, and then right around past the wide point, it goes into this double, and as it goes to the tail, it, the double gets a little bit more aggressive. As you can see, the, uh, the twin fin setup is set pretty far back and the single fin is pretty set, pretty neutral. Um, this kind of tells me that a two plus one situation might not work out um, just because of the way that these are set up but maybe if you did want to run them all the way back and then had something that was a future setup that had it set up right around here, but I don't know. So this is what I'm gonna run in it for twin. I'm gonna do these. These are the upright keels by Hydrophile. And then as a single, I'm gonna try the 7.25 speed fin. And if I feel that it's a little small, I'm gonna grab the 8.25, which isn't over there, but it's gotta be somewhere in this garage. So that's the mid, and on to the longboard next. All right, guys, and on for the longboard. Um, first off, thank you, Trent, at Enlightened Surf Shop for thinking of me when this board surfaced. Uh, I didn't think that this was gonna be possible. 
but um, you made it happen and I'm super stoked. If you follow the hashtag Fear the Spear or follow Michael Surfboards or Michael Takayama, you'll know what this is. For everyone else, this is a Michael Takayama perplexer, uh, 9.6. So listen, normally I would go through and tell you all about tail rocker, tail width, nose rocker, nose width, all that stuff. I'm not going to for this board. And the reason why is that I want to respect the shaper himself. And um, this is not one of those boards that you can just get at any surf shop. So all the other boards, it's a little different. They're a little bit easier to get. And I just, I feel that's a respectable thing to do for this particular board. Um, but at the same time, I gotta say, there are some things that you can see Obviously, there's a good amount of nose rocker, and there is a good amount of tail rocker as well. And you can look it up, uh, and that's the whole thing about reviewing this board. There are no reviews of these boards because they're that hard to get. Um, and there's a reason. They're I've served this thing two times. <laughs> it's really good. Um, it has this interesting concave coming out the tail. It does have nose concave, but there's just a lot of secrets going on with this board that I am not cool with sharing, so I'm not going to. Um, as far as the fin, and this fin just seems to kind of go with every single board that Michael is making, it is a DT Flex in 10. I have it about an inch from the top of the box. I'm gonna go surf these boards and uh, I can't wait to show you what this thing does. See you soon.
Welcome back. So with some thought, I decided to kind of rate this a little bit different. I decided that I wasn't going to use a numerical system and I wasn't going to rate uh, in exact categories. And the reason why is really um, the only category that this thing excels in is going to be trim. Uh, maneuver, it's not going to do very well. And frankly, I don't want to give it such a low rating in that aspect. The volume's not great. Uh, it does have drive, but um, really this thing is just a lot of fun, but it is a, it's a very, it's the alternative craft, but it's also a very tough criteria of surfing in general. Uh, it needs a certain wave and you can kind of see that in the footage. You can see that like it doesn't excel in uh, like big dumpy waves and it works best almost in chest high and lower but very very fast beach break or point break waves. I didn't get a chance to ride a point break in it but I did ride it in a day where it was pretty strong uh, offshore winds and kind of small but you could really see that the thing just gets up and goes. Um, so I guess that does have to do with drive, but I also know how to paddle these things. They're not real easy to paddle. Uh, a lot of you guys already know this, and you can see also um, how thin they are. Uh, it's a very different feel to anything else. There's some people that I know that exclusively rides them and I think that's really cool, and I really tried to be one of those people, but uh, they're just really hard to surf uh, in a day-to-day -day basis. So that's my review on it. Um, it's definitely, if you've ever had a Kloss Jones Siglo, uh, it's definitely as thin as that, and it almost has a outline of a burrito, except it's a little bit more pulled in in the tail. Um, I've ridden the burrito and it's, it's surfed a little bit better than this. This is again, 5'11", so um, it is on the smaller side. If I were to get something like this for myself, I'd probably go seven foot plus for sure. Uh, just to get the volume that I wanted in order to get into waves easy. Um, but I do also, again, know people that love these things and I give you guys a lot of respect. Uh, so with that said, on to the mid. Now for the mid, the uh, Machado Sunday 6.8. This is Wills. Uh, Wills has been getting more and more interested in surfboard design. Oh, yeah. um, he surfed a lot. Well, tell your little... Tell my story. Yeah, tell your story. All right, well, I was surfing a lot when I was younger and kind of slowed down, doing some other things, and got back to surfing into shortboards. Wasn't really progressing, and then Dave kind of introduced this into my life first big board or medium board in my quiver and yeah. uh it just changed my approach to surfing totally as a whole it's just so super fun cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah so um yeah let's just get right into categories i gave a 8.5 for maneuver uh so with the designated fin setup i ran as a twin and a single so i kind of felt that since the fins are set so far back as a twin that it wouldn't make sense to run it as a two plus one. So I strictly ran it as twin or single. And I feel like that's what Rob is kind of doing as well. He's not really riding two plus ones. He's either riding quads, thrusters, singles, or twins. That's it. Um, so as far as maneuver, I definitely felt that the twin setup gave a good amount of speed off the bottom 
and when you came up to the top, it did give more of a turning radius, but I felt myself almost turning so hard where the tail was starting to slip out. Keep in mind, could have also been the fins. These fins are a little flexy, and I've been trying to turn, you know, huge long boards for the past five or so years. So the way that I turn a board is a little different than everybody else. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as a single fin, I did feel that it gave me more of that carvy turn and not such a short border style turn uh, as the twin. Um, you can kind of see how Rob surfs it. Rob obviously surfs it way better <laughs> than it. anyone. Um, but you can see the way that he does surf it as a twin. He doesn't let the board give so much push and that's what gives Rob that amazing style. Um, yeah. So yeah, what would you think about the You know, I really agree. Maneuver? I really agree with what you said about the fins cuz I I did try this with another set of fins that were a little stiffer and mm -hmm. as soon as we switched to these, it opened up the board in the maneuverability category for sure. It just with our kind of crummier waves, it just helped in your turns, get you that speed to the top, to the bottom, and, and back. It was, it was awesome. And then that one day with the single fin, it was, you just felt in control. Mm -hmm. You know, the waves were a little bigger, but you just felt super in control. You know, everything felt nice. I think like with the pintail and everything, it just, the carve was smooth. It was, it was nice. I do prefer the twin. I had so much fun with that. Totally, <laughs> totally. And uh, so next category is drive where I personally gave an 8.5 and this is where it kind of gets interesting because I like the turning radius of the single fin, but I do like the drive of the twin. Um, completely different situation. The drive from the twin gave so much more speed around sections that would kind of close out in front oh, yeah. of you that I was able to just make it around. Now, mm -hmm. with the single, there were a couple times where I kind of got stuck at the top of the wave and wasn't able to get it down and actually had to do a little bit of hop, which you and I talked about, only yeah, slows yeah. you down. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, yeah, I would give drive, as far as the board itself, 8.5, but it really does change as far as which way you're setting up the, the fins. Um, totally. Now, a little off subject, and we didn't really talk about it, but okay. while I was Curve in the California, have you, if you've heard of the Californians, uh, Jersey. Yeah, yeah, it's the complete different <laughs> opposite of Jersey. I happened to stay with a buddy that had a Machado Sunday in 6'8". I did not get to ride it because he had a full track pad on the front. I just thought that was ridiculous. So uh, he actually had MRs as the sides oh. and then got a little skip fry fin about this big from Bird Surf Shack and put it in the single fin box as a trailer fin. Again, I didn't get to try it, but he said that it gave that little bit of control, but also gave good drive from what the board was given as far as like a twin fin. So, oh like yeah, we that. didn't even we didn't even talk about that. I like that. Uh, what is your thought on drive? You know, it was it was fast. It was fast in small waves. It was super fast in, in bigger waves. I loved getting into a wave and kind of creeping up, like right about here, kind of where the, I guess to say where the wide point is. It kind of just took off on you, like in the, in the best way. Um, backside, front side, it was really, really a good time. Just without even turning, just kind of getting up here and cruising. It was, cool. yeah, it picked up. It was good. Nice. Uh, Trim. So for me, this category with this board, I can't really figure out trim because I'm so used to a bigger board as far as the trim category. So actually, Wills, I'm going to have you kind of take over. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that you say that because this is my bigger board. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And I would ride this teeny tiny days when everyone had a longboard. This would be my longboard. And I mean, I'm talking on knee high days. You'd paddle into something with ease, stand up and you'd just be cruising. I would think of it as a couch. I would just kind of get up and just hang there. And it was just like the best time I would I love trim. Did, did you rate it at all, or you want me to? I didn't even you want me rate to throw it. A number out there. Okay. Um, you well, can throw out a number. I'll throw out yeah. a number. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say eight because it was just easy. It okay. was super duper easy. You just kind of got up, locked in there, and just hope for the best. Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it was great. And again, the only reason why I can't numerically find a good, and I I've done it with boards similar. Um, such as the Campbell Brothers Bonzer that we reviewed in the past. But in all honesty, like the waves that I want to surf this in are going to be pretty big. So yeah. there's not a lot of... You're opposite of me with this board. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So I'm going to try to surf next to the pocket and you might go out and connect to that other section, which is trim. Totally, totally. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Love it. Uh, volume distribution duck dive. I gave 8.5. Uh, so in my opinion, this board is a uh, step up with thicker rails. And as you said, this being kind of your bigger board yeah. and this actually being my, uh, my smaller board. Yeah, yeah. Um, volume distribution to me... I think it paddled really, really well, but we'll Agreed. get into paddling a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but in general, the amount of thickness in the rails, um, you know, the way that it's kind of set up and it goes all the way kind of to the tip and to the tail, there's a lot of float going on. Mm -hmm. This is helium construction. So it's a type of epoxy as well. So it does float a little bit different. And the nice thing that I found with this is that even though it floats really well and is able to bring you above water, I'm still able to get it underneath water. Um, totally. How did you do as far as duck diving? <laughs> I think for me it was 50-50. I was either gonna make it or get pummeled. Okay. Um, obviously smaller days, no problem, no problem. But I started taking this out when I got a little more confidence on it and just wanted some more paddle power into a wave or anything. I took this out on some bigger days for me and, uh, you know, got manhandled a couple times. But but I think how the board surfs and, and everything far outweighs, like, getting out there. Totally. <laughs> you know, totally. it's like, you'll make it out there. Don't worry. Totally. But, but yeah, I, I'd say it's still doable. No cool. doubt. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> paddling. I gave it an 8.5, uh, paddled very well. Again, thickness in the rails kept you above and the wide point allowed the heaviest part of your body to be buoyant. Oh yeah. Uh, the, bot the bottom definitely allowed water to move quickly. Uh, you know, again, the single to the double, uh, you know, it just shows like if I were to put a hose to it, it would just all wash out the back and that definitely makes for quick paddling if you're in danger, <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> but also able to get into waves easy. And uh, this was a very easy board for me to get into waves in. I know okay. it was a very easy board for you to get into waves in. Absolutely. Um, and definitely, you know, a couple paddles, drop in into the wave, and then plenty of drive all in all oh yeah it was awesome yeah i i, I want to add one thing i do love how that tail did thin out a bit back here with the the double concave because i felt like even though like for me i'm five six 150 with a wetsuit on this is a lot of board and having like stepping back on that tail and having that volume kind of not as gnarly as it up here made it very very smooth cool yeah for cool. sure all right so uh last category special moments and i actually gave this a nine um oh, yeah. i don't really ride boards that allow me to maneuver like this um so it's always a treat for me to ride something on this style uh, i usually ride kind of more fuller outlines stuff that 
kind of won't allow me to do what my uh, my 20 year old self would have done. <laughs> um, so it was definitely pretty fun to get on a board that paddled really well, but also maneuvered at that same uh, just frequency. It was really it was really fun. I love it yeah. that it's a twin fin or a single fin. Um, there's something to be said about the twin fins being pushed back. The turning radius is way tighter and it's a lot faster to me. There's a reason why the mini Simmons boards, the fins are set way back, yeah. um, which I'll get you on really soon. Good point. I like that. And then uh, the single fin, you know, again, I love this outline as far as a single fin. Um, it's just a classic outline and I think it's really cool. Um, and of course, again, the helium, uh, it's, I don't want to say completely indestructible. <laughs> it's close. But uh, it, it holds up really well in situations where, uh, you rocks know. Rocks get in the way. Rocks get in the way. Rocks can get in the way sometimes. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. what I have to say about that. <laughs> and uh, just one last thing that I want to also say is what Rob is doing is consistently um, just working with new technology, working with different styles, and always bringing it back to having fun. Uh, right. He's always been known to say foam is your friend. And after riding the 5A Glazer in episode four, I saw myself surfing this board a lot, how I would surf the Glazer, where even in not great waves, I would constantly be cutting back and finding the power of the wave. And then just a lot of movement. And it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So that's it. That's all I got. Sport's great. Yeah. Any special moments for you? Oh, my God. The whole, since day one, absolutely. This board was a full game changer for me. It kind of brought me back to square one of just getting up and riding the wave and not worrying about turning, about doing anything, just kind of having fun and relaxing. And mm. I feel like that has helped my surfing maybe progress a little more than it would if I was just always jumping on a shortboard and, you know, whatever. This has been a total, like, take it easy, have a good time, and just enjoy. I think exactly why he made this it fully connected with me. All I do is enjoy it. And it's yeah. it's brought just tons of smiles. And it, it will make me surf when it's crummy. You know, it gets me out on all the days because I have other boards for other waves. So this kind of covers everything else that I could want. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I will also say, um, for people that are unsure about trying boards like this as well, I personally have found that when I watch you surf this board, I see you letting the wave do the work. Definitely. And you're finding places to turn on the wave that you probably normally wouldn't. Maybe you're pushing out a little further so that way you can come and cut back even harder. Yeah. And now I'm starting to see a transition into your shortboarding. And Absolutely. in my eyes, your style's getting better. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I think this is the reason, you know, it's slow, like, like I was saying, it slowed me down. It kind of, it checked me a little bit, you know, it was like, whoa, like maybe I'm, you know, still moving my arms too much, whatever, whatever, but we all do. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, <laughs> but like this thing has really helped. I appreciate you saying that because I feel that way, but like everyone thinks their turns look sick, you know, or whatever. But no, I really do feel that way. It's just helped everything from the short board to the long board to the mid length it yeah it just brought me into feeling comfortable on the wave cool. like itself yeah for sure all right guys and uh now for the long board probably the board that most of you guys were interested in michael takiyama perplexer uh such an interesting experience with this board uh just to kind of give you like another good look at it um you can see that uh the nose is definitely pulled in there's a lot of width in the tail and it's definitely 
on the thinner side. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Category one, nose ride, 8.75. And I bet you were kind of expecting a little bit of a higher score. Now, when judging nose riding for myself, the Continental for me is always gonna be one of the higher ones because I've had my longest nose ride on it. Although maybe not the best style, uh, it definitely was my longest nose ride. Now this board, a little different. Not the longest nose rides I've ever had, but I will say that there was a lot more confidence in walking up to the nose than any other lawn board that I've ever had. Um, the confidence of cross-stepping up, coming up here, uh, and I could literally just put my arms to my side, which was very refreshing. It's something that I've been trying to do, and I have had a struggle doing it, and this allowed me to definitely kind of just put my arms to the side and kind of like feel proud. I don't know. It was kind of sweet. Um, so this is a advanced nose riders nose rider, uh, definitely. Obviously the amount of width in the tail coming all the way back definitely holds. The amount of lift that I got from this board was kind of insane. Um, I was looking at some stills where it was like a knee high wave and I was at the tip with my arms to the side and like this much of the board was levitating off. And I've definitely, you don't even realize that it's happening and that's kind of cool. Then when you look back, you realize that your whole entire board was about two feet from the bottom of the wave just levitating on a knee-high wave. So that says a lot. That's really cool. But here's the thing. Walking back at times gets a little tricky. I feel that this thing is more comfortable walking up than back. Um, the lack of nose width Definitely. I really wanted to try some like hang heel stuff that I was kind of goofing around with, with the Continental and got really close. I couldn't get comfortable with this board doing that. Um, it was just, I think it's just because the narrowness of the actual nose itself, um, which usually I'm very attracted to, but of course I had a ton of lift on it and maybe the narrowness kind of helps with that. It allows it to not dig into the wave and almost put you out further instead of digging into the side. I don't know, but I will tell you that um, as someone that is definitely getting better and better with every board, nose riding, this is not a beginner nose riders board. This is definitely an advance. There's a reason why Michael Takayama um, has an insane team. It's because they're really good nose riders and they're using a really good nose rider board, which is this. Now, if you notice in the video footage, I'm kind of going up quick. I'm getting my nose ride in and I'm coming back. That's something else that I noticed. I feel that I couldn't hold it there for very long. I felt that at times I kind of got pushed off the back and had to get low, where usually I would think that I would sink the nose, but in actuality, I kept with the lift and had to almost like try to paddle myself back into the wave. Um, I tried a little bit of a different fin this is a 10 inch Takayama. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry, but I forgot what the name of this fin is, but you guys know what it is. And I used a Tyler Warren pivot fin in 10.75 and still cannot get a difference. Um, 
This is just my personal experience again, surfing beach breaks in a board that's kind of made more for point breaks. So that's my nose rides. Uh, let's get into maneuver. Gave it a seven. This board is really hard to turn. Um, the first couple times I surfed it, I had to push so hard to get the board to do my pivot. And I was actually, the first couple waves that I got were really difficult. Um, and I was a little nervous that I was gonna hate this board, but I eventually figured out how to do it. And I also had to move my fin a little bit. Um, and that definitely helped. I moved it up just a touch. So that way it kind of gave a little bit more looseness, especially with this wide tail. But I will say it is not for me. And I'm usually pretty good at turning a board. This thing was really tough. And I give a lot of props to uh, Kai Takayama, which I've seen literally do uh, like, hand in the water turns where the only thing that you can see is the fin and it looks like it's about to pop up cutbacks on this thing. I don't know how he does it, but just keep in mind, this thing does not turn amazing. It's not meant to, it's meant to nose ride. And uh, it does do that, but just, you know, keep in mind, especially if you're riding kind of junky waves, this thing's gonna be really hard to control. You want good waves, good board for good waves. Trim, 8.5. Uh, so I overheard a podcast with the Longboardarian where he interviewed Michael Takayama and the guy, I think his name is Tupi, uh, mentioned that he rode one of Michael's boards and said that it was riding like a Cadillac. And I have to agree with him. It is super smooth. You barely feel anything underneath you. Um, it just, it, it feels really controlled. And especially in trim, it feels like it just keeps going. Um, and obviously it gains speed with ease and keeps it really well, which is what makes a good nose rider a good nose rider. Um, I definitely never felt it kind of boggy, except when all the way up here where I was getting tossed off the back. But as far as in trim position, normally in this area, very fast, very smooth. Uh, volume distribution. I gave it an eight. Um, now, when first getting one of these boards or seeing one in person, uh, it's very interesting because I've never seen anything like it in my life. Um, and it's, you guys can probably already kind of tell, but there's a lot of thickness in the nose coming from the rail and there's barely any thickness in the tail. As far as the middle goes, you know, this board is almost, egg-like in the aspect that the rails are full and the deck is pretty flat. And, you know, as far as dimensions go, I feel like this, I don't have one of those tools, but I feel like this board might be 2.75 and it could be three in the middle, but, um, he really allows all the volume to just stay all the way to the rail. And I feel like that's what kind of gives it that just platform to be able to nose ride. Um, again, we already talked about turning. Uh, I do feel that it is a lot of board up front, especially the thickness that could have to do with the turning. Um, it, and it's definitely obviously the wide tail, but all in all, the thing cruises. Um, getting into waves, we'll get into paddling in a sec, but once you're in the wave, 
the thing just takes off and that says a lot about volume right there. Um, yeah, volume is very interesting on this board. And again, you'll have to see one in person in order to understand because they are unlike anything I've ever seen. And I've had a couple long boards. Uh, so anyway, paddling, seven. Uh, it's a nose rider. And guess what nose riders don't do great? They don't paddle that well. A good nose rider does not paddle amazing. Uh, it does have a good amount of, uh, as far as nose rocker, and it does have concave. There are some that don't have concave. This one does. It didn't paddle well. You, you gotta be in good shape and you have to be uh, very able to paddle a surfboard in order to paddle this thing. There is a lot of hydrodynamics that Michael does with this board, but I think the hydrodynamics are only working in your favor when you're up on a board or when you're up on the wave. Um, yeah, sorry, it doesn't paddle that great. But again, this is a advanced surfer, advanced nose riders, nose rider. So it doesn't necessarily have to paddle great because if you're a good surfer, you've already put in the work to be able to paddle through anything. So just kind of keep that in mind too. Anyone that uh, is interested in one of these boards because they're really cool, but they don't necessarily get a lot of time in the water, or maybe you haven't been surfing for that long, I don't exactly suggest one of these. You're gonna have a tough time. Um, special moments. 8.5. Special moments were pretty consistent with this board. Um, the special moments were being able to get up to the nose proper, uh, try to work on my smoothness as far as nose riding. And again, I'm not a great nose rider. And the ability to finally put my hands to my side and just be there. And every single time I surf, I try even, you know, I'm a little older, but I always try to work on my style. And I definitely feel that this thing taught me a few things as far as when to nose ride, how to look when you are nose riding. And I can look back at the video and see myself getting more and more comfortable. And that says a lot to me. So that's my special moment is just in general, helping me kind of work on my style, getting my nose riding just a little bit better. And I appreciate that. So all in all, I give this board an eight as an overall. Um, Michael makes another style board. Actually, he makes a bunch of different boards now. I would suggest that if you're gonna get a Michael Takayama and spend the money um, because they are one of the most expensive long boards out there. And I say one of, all right. Um, the craftsmanship's insane. And I didn't even mention that and I apologize, but this whole resin thing, the spear is all raised resin. It's kind of insane the craftsmanship that he put into this board, it's beautiful. There's literally, I mean, the glassing itself is worth the money. Um, anyway, talk to Michael about getting a board. And if you're surfing beach break, let him know. And if you're surfing points, then the perplexer might be your board. But if you're surfing a beach break like me, you might want to check out the Anni Annihilator? Annihilator board. Uh, he has another board called like the Mana T, and then there's a comp board. They all look really cool. I bet you they all nose ride really well, but it would have been nice to have something that turned a little bit better, especially in my beach break. Anyway, that's the end. Um, the next longboard that I'm gonna be reviewing, 
It's going to be this guy up here. It's a 9-1. It's the CJ Apex. Uh, really psyched on this one. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can subscribe at the bottom. You can like, comment. Please reach out if you have questions. Uh, that's what this is all about. Uh, check out the Instagram page too because you guys might be missing out on little things that we do uh, as far as little discussions with the people that are on there. But uh, as every episode ends, I got my little knickknack. This is a slow tide changing towel, but a little different because it has a waterproofing around it. So I like to think that they were thinking about New Jersey surfers and other Northeast surfers in the aspect of winter surfing where you can just throw this guy on and drive home and not have to worry about getting your seat wet. Thought it was kind of cool, definitely worth the money. Uh, have to say thank you to my wife Jen for picking this up for me. I appreciate it. And as always, stay safe. Be nice, surf soon. Peace, guys.